Canadian parliamentarian is apologizing after a standing ovation was given to a 98-year-old veteran allegedly belonging to a Nazi division in World War II. The blunder took place during Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky's visit to the country and address to Canada's House of Commons. Veteran Yaroslav Hanka, quote, stood and appeared to salute when he was recognized by House Speaker Anthony Rota, who introduced Hanka as a Canadian-Ukrainian war hero. We have here in the chamber today Ukrainian Canadians, Ukrainian Canadian world veteran from the Second World War who fought the Ukrainian independence against the Russians and continues to support the troops today, even at his age of 98. His name is Yaroslav Hunka. He's a Ukrainian hero, a Canadian hero, and we thank him for all his service. Thank you. As you can see in the clip, Rhoda's words received a lengthy applause and lots of waving from the floor, including from Zelensky and Canadian Prime Minister, Minister Justin Trudeau. Yesterday, Jewish groups condemned the honoring of Hunka, saying he had been a member of the Waffen SS unit, which was comprised of Ukrainians, according to the Washington Post. Heinrich Himmler, who was a leading member of the Nazi Party in Germany, formed the Waffen SS. The group was involved with mass shootings, anti partisan warfare, and supplying guards for Nazi concentration camps. Rhoda apologized yesterday for what occurred on Friday, writing in a statement, quote, I recognize an individual in the gallery. I have subsequently become aware of more information, which causes me to regret my decision to do so. I particularly want to extend my deepest apologies to the Jewish community in Canada and around the world. I accept full responsibility for my actions. The Friends of Simon Weisenthal Center for Holocaust Studies said in a statement, the fact that a veteran who served in a Nazi military unit was invited to and given a standing ovation in Parliament is shocking. Shocking, to say the least, Brie. I couldn't believe that. Almost a minute, it seemed like, of applause. Yeah, I, I, if this were, I think, an isolated event, I, I think that it wouldn't cause as much of a viral impact mm -hmm. the way it did over the weekend, on, on Twitter at least. But it does feel like part and parcel of a pattern. Uh, sometimes I don't fault the people involved. For example, there was that incident um, with uh, John Stewart where he was giving a medal to someone who it turned out was affiliated with Nazis in some know. way. Yeah. You know, I don't think that, you know, a, a Jewish man knowingly did that, sure. you know. But, you know, it, it, we keep losing track of the Nazis and they keep turning up be all that over many the place. Nazis across America. I mean, I mean and, I and, and the New York Times keeps running and, and various papers of record keep running photos of Ukrainian troops that include people with um, insignia, Nazi whether it's regalia. tattoos or yeah. regalia, yeah. et cetera. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point, it's, it's abutting this counter narrative that says, well, there's not a Nazi problem in Ukraine. That's only a Putin puppet yeah. narrative that's used to disincentivize people from wanting to support the war in true. Ukraine. I mean, a lot of conservatives have been saying for quite some time that that is a problem in Ukraine. And a lot of folks on the corporate left, I'll put it that way, out of respect just for you. The, just the liberals, they're not on <laughs> the, the left, the, they're the just liberals, liberals. The liberals have stated, oh my God, that this is just a conspiracy theory right. of Republicans buying into propaganda from Putin. Right. And here you go with Hunka being applauded by the entire Canadian parliament, Bria. I mean, as someone who's worked for presidential candidates, I've advised members of Congress in the House and Senate, how in the world, Bria, did no one on the staff look this guy up? It, Not it, a single person. It's very confusing. It, it, there's also this weird um, way that Russia is talked about. If we're talking about Russia and in the context of World War II, yeah. and you're talking about someone who was fighting Russians in the context of World War II, guys, did we not all do high school history? 
They were on our side. <laughs> right, right. The Russians were the good guys. <laughs> Something like 20, I think 20, close to 30 million yeah. Russians yeah. died in World War II. Yeah. They took the biggest hit. And people forget that. 27, I mean, that. it was devastating. And then we decided afterward, oh gosh, we want to do Cold War fighting. We can't let socialism win, so we got to start the smear campaign. But like, how quickly we forget. So the idea that, I mean, you, we, I, I just, I don't understand how this can keep happening. And that combined with this other kind of Nazi problem where, look, I get a lot of pushback, you know, from Robbie and from some people in the audience. If I want to raise the issue of why it seems like these Nazis also keep popping up at various shooting events that are being done by Nazis that say they follow prominent um, right-wing commentators like Tim Poole. There are um, Trump sitting down with Nick Fuentes and people who are kind of self-described Which he also didn't know in that case. Sure, sure. But again, how is the, How does this keep happening? I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't know. You know? I, I don't know. I, it, it feels like, I, I understand conservatives as a whole not wanting to be tarred by the mistakes that are being made by a few. Sure. But it also feels like the response to when these incidents happen isn't a full-throated condemnation in many instances of Nazism as an ideology. Instead, we've seen this from even um, Elon Musk. There's this argument that, well, it's not, th that anti-Semitism isn't actually growing, that the Nazi movement isn't actually growing, that there's nothing to see here, folks. Which, I mean, people debate and dispute. Elon Musk is, ob is obviously arguing right now that the ADL is wrong yeah. about the increase of um, anti-Semitism and other kind of hate speech on, on X. X. Yeah. But it doesn't feel like there's a lot of Oh, if I'm Tim Pool and somebody shoots somebody on my behalf, like on my name or says they like me, just say, oh, Nazism, gross, wrong, bad. You know, that's an interesting point, but I have to say, I think most conservative people, I can't speak to individuals with large platforms or political leaders. I mean, you can even point to Ron DeSantis in Florida. A lot of people in the black community criticize him because he refused to say the guy was a racist mm -hmm. directly. Um, I don't agree with that. And when I travel the country, not only to major cities, but rural parts, because I do a lot of firearms act related activities, people despise that stuff. And yeah. I hear from a lot of conservative voters who do not look like me, who say, we don't want this being representative of the yeah. party. We want to get rid of this. Those people don't speak for us. So, Bri, I can't speak to individual leaders, but I can absolutely say the overwhelming majority of conservative voters that I have spoken to that I know do not espouse those I, I believe that to be true, which is part of why this is so confusing. I, I don't know why this keeps happening. I don't know why the photo editors at the New York Times and the like don't. They should have. They should have a checklist. Yeah. A, a Nazi symbolism it's not checklist that hard. It's before not that they start. Because how many times can this happen? But you know what, Bree? I would say. I, you know, I think we need to really pause some of the funding to Ukraine to investigate this. I understand from an international perspective why the U.S. is in the midst of this proxy war, and I don't want to get into Russia-China relations and, and all of those reasons, because that's not the, the root of this conversation. But I don't want American tax dollars going to a country that may have members of its armed forces that are proud Nazis. And I think most Americans would probably say, yeah, I'm with Sir Michael on this. I don't want my tax dollars yeah. going to Nazis either. And in fact, back in 2018, and I confronted Ro Khan about this on an episode of my podcast um, maybe about a year ago, mm -hmm. there, con Congress did ban sending arms to Ukrainian militia that were linked to neo-Nazis. Back in 2018, and now we forgot. before this war, wow. <laughs> this was a big enough issue that the House passed, it was tucked into a spending bill, mm -hmm. a ban on U.S. aid to Ukraine from going to the Azov bat Battalion. And now, uh, you know, subsequent to that, I think uh, maybe last summer, last spring, uh, Max Blumenthal, who frequently is a guest on this show, a journalist, he confronted uh, Ro Khanna uh, outside of Congress about U.S. Yeah. funding to to Ukraine on the basis that you voted for this years Just ago. A few years ago, you what understood happened? that this was an, years ago, and now you're everybody is linked arm in arm and saying Nazism isn't a problem in Ukraine. Look, I personally am a critic of how much spending is going to Ukraine. But even if I weren't, there's a way to make the argument that says we should fund Ukraine, but we have to be more careful about who is getting these weapons. I mean, absolutely. And they're not even doing I that. I mean, Bree, you said 2018. I can guarantee the Nazis didn't just dissipate didn't between 2018 and 2023. But I think Congress is more vested in damaging Russia, 
Uh, the military industrial complex, which I strongly support as a big Second Amendment guy, those guys are vested in making a profit, which is nothing wrong with profit. But again, not to the extent of us in sort of reaffirming Nazism by supplying them military arms and hundreds of billions of dollars. I mean, I thought we defeated the Nazis almost 100 years ago, and here we are, a new modern iteration of them. We're saying, well, we're going to overlook this, even though we didn't just a few years ago because we want to cause harm to Russia. Again, we need to pause the spending bree. Look at what we looked at in 2018. What has changed? I would be willing to bet Bree has probably even gotten worse because if you remember the Africans in Ukraine, how they would not allow them I to board the trains, and it wasn't until that stuff hit the news in the West that Zelensky and others stepped in and said, wait a minute, we have to help get these folks to Poland. They went to the uh, Polish border and they said everyone could come in but you. So clearly there is some issue in Ukraine that, in my opinion, is not in sync with our ideals as Americans. I couldn't agree more. All right, we'll let you know if there's any follow-ups on that particular shocking story, and we'll have more rising for you after this. Please do stick around.